The House voted today to strip Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of her committee assignments, even as most Republicans stood by her, despite a history of truly deranged, bigoted statements. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Right now, as we speak, we're in the middle of several urgent calamities that show no signs of slowing anytime soon. Poverty and child hunger are rising. Millions have lost their health insurance amid a deadly pandemic. COVID variants are spreading. Vaccinations are not keeping pace with the spread. And on top of all that, pilots are saying they're making in-flight mistakes because they're so out of practice. CNN is learning that some commercial airline pilots, the planes that fly, all of us, are telling federal authorities the long layoffs and downtime during the pandemic has left them, in their words, rusty, causing them to even make some in-flight mistakes. Pilots self-reported being rusty in at least 26 separate cases since the start of the pandemic. You never want to hear the words rusty and commercial airline pilot in the same sentence, unless rusty is the name of a commercial airline pilot. I mean, I would trust a Captain Rusty with my life. Oh, sure, sure. There's some mornings when he's had a rough night and has to blow out the cobwebs before he takes her up. But when you lose an engine and things go sideways, there's no one I'd rather have at the helm than Captain John Rustenberger. And the fact that you suits at the FAA have the nerve to question him? When your idea of turbulence is a Lexus going over a pothole while it makes me sick to my stomach. Anyway, where was I? Oh, right. Pilot is one of those jobs, along with doctor and crane operator, where you never want to be out of practice. Okay, folks, if you are seated on the right side of the aircraft, you can look out your window and you'll see you are looking straight down at the ocean. Also, if anyone knows what that alarm means, go ahead and pop on by the uh, pilot house. No, that's not it. What is it? Oh, the cockpit. Knew it was something crazy. Why is it called that? If you guys have GoGo -Go internet Wi-Fi, could you Google why we call it the cockpit? <laughs> also, did you guys pay for GoGo -Go all year? <laughs> I'm asking for a talk show host. <laughs> we need a functional, healthy political system that can respond to these uh, crises because they're causing misery and suffering for millions of Americans. And with Democrats taking control of Congress and the White House, there have been some real glimmers of hope. They're not waiting for permission from Republicans to do big, bold things on everything from COVID relief to immigration to the environment. And on top of all that, thanks to a new organizing resolution finally passed after weeks of GOP obstruction, the Senate Budget Committee has a new chairman who has made clear he has no interest in yielding to Republican stonewalling. This formalizes the reality that the Democrats are now the majority party in the United States Senate. Because we're in a 50-50 split, we need to have an agreement over things like how committees would be run. You heard from Leader Schumer there. The deal is done. It'll be voted on today. That means, you know, Bernie Sanders is your new budget chairman. That's right. Bernie's in charge of the budget now. Get ready for direct checks expanded unemployment benefits, a $15 minimum wage, and for the Senate thermostat to be set to 64 no matter how cold it is outside. You're wasting heat. Everyone gets a coat and a pair of mittens, and if you're still cold, try thinking warm thoughts. I like to picture a kitten sharing her yarn with other kittens because no kitten should lack access to yarn. As we've said many times on this show, there are massive systemic, deeply ingrained flaws in our system that preceded Donald Trump and will outlast him. He exposed them and made them worse, but he did not create them, and they won't just magically go away now that he's gone. In fact, he's not even really gone. He's still exerting influence over the Republican Party. Just last week, he met with House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy at Mar-a-Lago and posed for this photo where the two of them look like they're about to ask if you have a structured settlement and need cash now. They look less like personal injury lawyers and more like lawyers with personal injuries. Did you slip and fall and land on your head? Us too. Do you need a lawyer? So do we. Call 1-800-1-WAIT. What's the number? I forgot. Hold on. Start over. Who am I? Also, where are they? That looks like a Miami drug lord's pool house. There should be a weird kid lighting firecrackers behind them. Even after he's left office, Republicans are competing to prove their loyalty to Trump. Take, for example, Florida Congressman Matt Gates, one of the seditionists who spread lies about election fraud and tried to overthrow the results, and who looks like someone tried to make Tom Cruise out of Legos but then didn't have any Legos, so had to use Duplo bricks. He went on Steve Bannon's podcast, which I assume he records at the bottom of the sea. Gates said he was so dedicated to defending Trump during the upcoming impeachment trial that he'd be willing to give up his congressional seat and even his house to join the former president's defense team. 
would you resign in order to defend the president on the way that you want to defend him? I love my district. I love representing them. But I view this cancellation of the Trump presidency and the Trump movement as one of the major risks to my people, both in my district and all throughout this great country. Absolutely. If the president called me and wanted me to go defend him on the floor of the Senate, that would be the top priority in my life. I would leave my house seat. I would leave my home. I would do anything I had to do. My house seat. I would leave my home. I would burn all my clothes and give away all my money because that's how much I love this man. This man who has never returned even an ounce of the same loyalty to anyone ever. I would do anything for him. I would live in the woods. I would subsist on a diet of squirrels and roughage. I'd roam through the forest naked looking for fraudulent ballots like some sort of half man, half goblin, scaring hikers and feasting upon the garbage left behind at campsites because that's how much this man means to me. This man who is incapable of human emotions like love and compassion who, and this is true, once got my name wrong, I would do anything for him. I mean, it is just so hard to fully articulate how pathetic it is to be that servile toward any politician. I mean, do I like Joe Biden? Sure, I mean, I guess so. Would I quit my job and leave my house to go defend him if he got impeached for, I don't know what he'd get impeached for, like getting in a fist fight at a bar over a jukebox? Hey, who turned off free falling? It's time for you to meet Tom Petty and the face breakers. But there's no doubt that this is the wing of the party that's ascendant, the Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump wing of the party. It doesn't matter if GOP elder statesmen want to pretend they're part of a nobler tradition of so-called conservatism. Utah Senator Mitt Romney said this week of the GOP, our big tent is not large enough to both accommodate conservatives and kooks. Uh, buddy, you sound like a middle school teacher who says, listen, we can't have a pop quiz and a pizza party, so what's it gonna be, kids? Okay. Well, I'm not hearing a lot of pop quiz. Actually, your tent is big enough for both. Yesterday, House Republicans voted to retain Liz Cheney in her leadership position and gave Green a standing ovation. Your tent is big enough for conservatives and kooks because it's a circus tent or one of those large outdoor wedding tents where you get speeches from kindly grandpas telling cute stories about the bride and drunk aunts who steal the mic and refuse to give it up. When I first saw these two together, I knew there was a spark, kind of like... The spark caused by the Jewish space laser that started the wildfire. No, no, Pamela, I will not sit down. This is my time. I'm being canceled. I tell Liz Cheney to just leave the GOP, but being a Cheney, I doubt she has an exit strategy. Iraq war joke. God, it's nice now that Trump is gone and I can get back to doing my Cheney material. It's a real shot in the face. Now, it's worth stepping back and remembering that these people are massively unpopular with normal people. Trump was, according to polling, the most disliked president in modern history. He never cracked 50%, lost the popular vote twice, got impeached twice, lost the House by a record margin in 2018, then lost the Senate. Not to mention he oversaw the worst public health crisis and economic crash in 100 years. Meanwhile, every single executive order Joe Biden has issued so far that's been the subject of polling is either majority or plurality support, and even a majority of Republicans support the $1,400 checks. If we had an actual democracy with a level playing field, Republicans would wield power as often as the Jets make the playoffs. They'd tank every year, but then win just enough games to lose out on the top draft pick and get stuck with some second tier quarterback from one of those super specific part of the state schools you've never been to, like Southwest Idaho Tech or Northeastern Montana A&M, a guy with an unforgettable name like Matt Jones or Jake Smith or just Steve. I don't like this Steve guy. In a normal democracy, the Republican Party would be forced to dump all these deeply unpopular goblins because they would have to appeal to a majority of voters. But we don't have a normal democracy. We have a system where the GOP has won the popular vote one time in the last 32 years, and where the 50 Senate Republicans represent 40 million fewer Americans than the 50 Senate Democrats. So Republicans have no incentive to appeal to most Americans, only to their base, and their base is increasingly unhinged. New poll shows that Republican voters favor Green and McCarthy over Cheney and McConnell, despite the fact that Green has said, among other things, that school shootings were faked and that Nancy Pelosi should be executed for treason, questioned whether a plane crashed into the Pentagon on 9-11 and suggested that a Jewish space laser caused wildfires. And I know we keep mentioning the space laser, and it does sound insane out of context, but it's worth actually reading what she said. This is what Green wrote in a 2018 Facebook post, when, to be fair, she was only in her early 40s. 
I'm posting this in speculation because there are too many coincidences to ignore. Oddly, there are these people who have said they saw what looked like lasers or blue beams of light causing the fires. If they are beaming the sun's energy back to Earth, I'm sure they wouldn't ever miss a transmitter receiving station, right? I mean, mistakes are never made when anything new is invented. What would that look like anyway? A laser beam or light beam coming down to Earth, I guess? Could that cause a fire? Hmm, I don't know. I hope not. Anytime someone says there are too many coincidences to ignore and their name is in Fox Mulder, that's your cue to exit the conversation. It's like wandering over to someone and hearing, look, I'm not saying dolphins definitely are secret agents trained by the CIA to spy on us. I'm just asking, why are they always jumping out of the water? What's so interesting up here that they just have to look at it? Why are they always smiling like someone just told them a secret? Also, the way they click, that's Jewish Morse code. Oh, gotta go. Time for my wedding toast. Don't side-eye me, Pamela! And yet, despite her history of expressing support for political violence, as well as anti-Muslim and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, yesterday McCarthy basically stood by Green and claimed she'd apologized. I denounce all those um, comments that were brought up. Um, everybody, and she came to the she came inside our conference and denounced them as well. She said she was wrong. She has reached out in other ways and forms. She has expressed that she has put it out. Um, from news agencies and others, I think it would be helpful if you could hear exactly what she told all of us. Denouncing QAnon, I don't know if I say it right, I don't even know what it is. Um, any from the shootings, she said she knew nothing about lasers or all the different things that have been brought up about her. Okay, first of all, you don't know how to pronounce QAnon. Isn't that exactly what a deep state satanic cult member would say? Sorry, uh, there are just too many coincidences to ignore. Second, you should probably learn since a lot of your voters are super into it. That's like Kid Rock saying, I'm sorry, how do you pronounce this? Ba wit de ba? Second, if you want us to hear her say it, then why doesn't she just say it? If she's so sincere about her apology, then why didn't she make it public? Is it a secret? Is this like when you forget to buy your wife an anniversary gift and you tell her you have one, but you can't show it to her yet because it's too good and she needs to mentally prepare for it, and then you spend the rest of the night typing things my wife likes into Amazon until Amazon types back, I'm not her husband? She obviously is not sincere. She's been raising money off it, and then today she spoke on the House floor where instead of apologizing unequivocally and denouncing her previous comments, the best she could do was this. I also want to tell you 9-11 absolutely happened. Oh my God, thank you. It is so big of you to admit that. What else would you like to clarify? I would also like to make clear that Inception is just a movie, Robocop is not real, and the giant glowing orb in the sky is in fact the moon and not a secret sky bank where Bill Gates keeps all his gold bars. Then she went back to saying more heinous stuff like equating the media with QAnon. Will we allow the media that is just as guilty as QAnon of presenting truth and lies to divide us? Are you insane? Wait, I'm sorry. Why am I asking this as a question? You are insane. The media and QAnon are both guilty of dividing Americans by claiming that a secret cabal of baby-eating Satan worshipers is running the government. Wolf Blitzer, I accept your apology if that is your real name. I see you under that beard, Space Laser. Nicely done on the graphic there. I had no idea what it was gonna look like. Kind of a fun little payoff. The Republican Party is radicalizing against democracy and away from the political mainstream because it has no incentive to appeal to a majority of Americans. That's why we need far-reaching structural reforms to our democracy to level the playing field, a system where one party can yield power despite representing 40 million fewer Americans in the Senate and winning the presidential popular vote once in 32 years is not tenable. Because right now, we have one party that's based in reality and another that believes in lasers. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.